Hi friends, today I'm going to do a swatch video of my neutral palette. So obviously everyone's definition of what neutral is, is different. This is what I consider to be neutral. It contains a lot of paints that are either granulating or uh, Primatech colors from Daniel Smith. So there are some uh, duplicates. There are actually a lot of overlap between this palette and the this palette the granulation palette that i created a while back a couple months ago as you can see i've used this palette a lot and i need to do a refill of this palette but um today i want to talk about this one so this holds 48 this holds i think 24 or something like that actually uh yes 24 so this is has a lot more colors and I don't know. Uh, I don't mind having overlaps in my palettes. I think it just, you know, I like to grab different palettes given my different moods. And the last row here is all core watercolors. So I will swatch these colors out, show you what they are. And um, yeah, hopefully this is helpful for you. Okay, let's get to swatching. So first I'm going to spray my palette. And these colors, they take a little bit to re-wet. So I like to get them going with spraying. You can also use a pipette. And the color order, this is actually the second time that I make this video. The first time um, the footage didn't turn out very good. But the order of the colors are, they're somewhat ordered but not perfect. And it doesn't bother me. Um, so this is Windsor Newton Potter's Pink is the first color. And the paper that I'm using is Fabriano Studio Watercolor Paper. It is uh, a huge pad. I don't like the paper texture. It is It doesn't have enough tooth for my preference, so that's why I uh, use it just for swatching. And... This one is Daniel Smith Robinite. Next up is Schmincke Galaxy Pink. And I will also show you some color combinations that I absolutely love with some of these, uh, these paints. So the fourth one is Tundra Rosa by Schmincke. I have... A couple of sets. I have the Tundra set and the green set. I think I forgot what it's called. And I know they're new sets. I'm not going to get them just because I think I have enough. The fifth one is Hematite Violet Genuine. Beautiful color. I lo absolutely love it. So much interest in this color. And the sixth one is Daniel Smith Amethyst Genuine. Um, so I've come to learn that I don't love the colors with shimmer. I don't know. Um, I love shimmer usually, and I use a ton of shimmer in my acrylic work. But I'm not sure why. I'm not a huge fan of watercolors with shimmer. And then the sixth... Uh, the next one is Tundra Violet by Schmenka. Love this color. It's very interesting. It is very cool. And as the paints dry, the granulation, like this one here, it shows through a little bit more. Next up is Galaxy Violet by Schmenka. So, lots of violet shades. I'm not even, <laughs> I don't use a whole lot of purples, but somehow I have a lot of these. Deep Sea Indigo is next by Schmincke. And to me, this is very similar to, I don't know, it doesn't look like an indigo though. To me, it's more blue. Um... Mine Blue Genuine is next, and I believe it's not Life Fast. 
So I know the last time I talked about um, Sleeping Beauty Turquoise not being life fast, someone said that, you know, Daniel Smith marked it as life fast. But if you um, watch people's either video or actual test, it's not life fast. So Mayan Blue Genuine has been, I've seen a couple of videos that says it's not life fast. And even though I haven't done my own research, I will trust their video. Um, next up is Lunar Blue, one of my favorite colors. Oh, I know you know if you've watched my other videos. I love Lunar Blue. And next is Tundra Blue by um, Schminka. So the Tundra colors are the ones with brown undertone and you can see this one is tundra violet and it is absolutely gorgeous how cool the color separation is and this after it dries it will also do the same thing the last one in the first row is daniel smith kyanite again it's one of those shimmery paints and i think the reflectivity maybe using a small amount would be cool but it kind of takes away from the whole um, granulation. I don't know. It kind of cheapens it, in my opinion. It's just my opinion. And I will have to kind of use it more to, to see if there are other ways to use it. Okay, so the second row starts with Lunar Black. And that's a very versatile color, in my opinion. And... Next is a combination of two paints in one pan. And so it's not a pan that, or a paint that you can purchase directly, but it's Mayan Blue mixed with Lunar Black. I wanted to see what kind of blue the two together would make, and it's gorgeous. So it's basically about half and half Mayan Blue and Lunar Black. It is so beautiful. I This is what I'm talking about when I say... The black, lunar black, is so versatile. You know, you can just combine it with other blues or any colors. Um, reds, greens, and add granulation. So here, this color is the, um, the Mayan blue uh, and lunar black together. It's kind of similar to the Tundra blue doesn't have that brown separation that you will see once this dries. So then we have Forest Blue by Schminka. So this is in one of the newer sets, not, not the newest. Uh, forest Blue in the Forest set. And next we have Serpentine. So these greens, uh, I just love them. I don't like the synthetic looking super bright greens i mean this is a bright green but it's not it's like a moss green kind of it's not very you know like hooker's green in your face kind of green phthalo greens uh, next we have green appetite from daniel smith um love this green as well i think i just prefer a yellowish or reddish green like these are so beautiful and next we have jadeite and this is very similar to when you add phthalo green and lunar black together like if you do that you get the same kind of effect but I have jadeite so I just put it in here and zozai is next and it is a kind of dirtier, oops, dirtier green, almost leaning towards like blackish. It's a little harder to rewet. Forest green is next. So we have a couple of forest colors for actually the forest set from the uh from Schmika. So forest green. Is next to me it's the least interesting one of the bunch 
it's just kind of a I don't know a mid-tone green and compared to these two you can see how these two are a lot more yellower and I like these two better then we have forest brown and I'm not sure why they called it forest brown because to me it looks I mean I'm sure it has the brown pigment in it but yeah it looks um definitely more green than brown <laughs> and next we have schmink of forest gray I absolutely love this color doesn't look great to me but you know that's okay um I adore oh it does look more gray it's more olivey of a green and you know I I love it and uh, next up we have Forest Olive, which is similar, I think, to the next color that we'll see. But this is Forest Olive. Very appropriate name. So olive Green. And next up is Tundra Green. So that is in the Tundra set. And yeah, like these three are kind of similar i definitely don't think you need all of these greens um because you know greens are easy to mix and i love mixing greens with my yellows and blues so you know see if these are good for you good fit for you i think i got them because um there was a sale uh on jackson's website and that's why i went for it and the last one in this row is cascade green and It is, the color will separate into a teal and a green when this dries. Okay, so the third row, it starts with um, browns and then it kind of goes back into the teals. I hope that's okay. Um, <laughs> I will just swatch in the order that is in the palette. Um, it just makes more sense, I think, visually in the palette. But it starts with Daniel Smith Quinn Sienna, a very bright color. But I love it still in landscape um, and next up we have tundra orange I love this color it is um, kind of like a leathery color and I'm not sure how to describe it but I love it it's it looks like a cup of coffee <laughs> love that next we have hematite burnt scarlet genuine and you know leave it to daniel smith for such a complicated name but it is um kind of a brown with some red tone granulation to it next we have Pematite, and i actually just got a stick of a watercolor stick of this color if you missed my last haul i will link that in the cards but this is the Pematite. Genuine. Uh, next, we have Venetian Red by, I believe, Jackson's. I don't think I have a Venetian Red in another brand. And in general, you can probably tell from this color swatch so far, I'm not a huge fan of reds. I uh, don't have a whole lot of reds, period. Uh, but this is one. Uh, next two are some of my most used colors in this palette. Tiger's Eye Genuine is, in my opinion, just a great companion color. I'm going to have to get more of it for all, almost all the, the paintings. I want to use it in almost all of my paintings because it's such a beautiful neutral. You can go cool tone with it. You can go warm tone with it you can't go wrong with it and next is bluestone genuine which i also want to use in all of my landscapes or neutral paintings because it is dark intense but it's not black it has a violet tone to it and it is absolutely beautiful when mixed with reds in my opinion so next we have a full pan of Aquarius Brown and it has, in, 
from what I have seen, the most interesting granulation in all of my... It's the most intense. I think it's more opaque. So the granulation really shows through. And, you know, every paper behaves differently. Um, like I said, I don't like this paper because I think it's too smooth, but it, you know, it's beautiful on some other more textured paper. Fuchsia is next from Daniel Smith, and it has a lot of shimmer, but um, I love this color. It is, you know, such a bright teal, and I, <laughs> I love teal. It looks like a pool in the sun. Just gorgeous. Okay, Amazonite is next. Um, it is a very well-known, I think, color from Daniel Smith, and... You know, these colors do make me very happy. Um, Sleeping Beauty is next. And from Daniel Smith, of course. Uh, a more kind of muted when you compare it to Amazonite. It's more blue. And we have a Glacier Green from Schmincke. In the last row of this palette, it is glorious. I would go with the Glacier Green before I would go with any of the um, these three other colors because of the very interesting granulation. You can already see it. It has like a violet color in here. Just genius. Okay, the last row... Um, should I go to a new piece of paper? I think I will. The last row is all core, and I have the core color separate because of the pushy effect that it has. I want to know when that's uh, coming. <laughs> so uh, I have them all in the last row of this palette. And it's a mixture of, I believe, two sets. Mm, the basic 12 set and a neutral set, I think. I can't remember. So it starts with Naples Yellow. And, you know, the pushy effect is, I can demonstrate. Again, I love that. I even, I use that to my kind of advantage. And this one is Yellow Ochre from also Core. All of these are Core. Next is Burnt Sienna. These are just delicious delicious colors in my opinion they're just you know you can't go wrong with I mean these are new basic colors and but I think they're they're basic for a reason you know there's just such um, staples for landscape Quinn gold is probably my most used um, color in this uh, core set the core row and then we have Quinn Gold Deep. I'm not sure if they're the same pigment. I will... Doesn't look like it. Quinn Gold Deep is a lot more orange. And Quinn Gold is more yellow. I'm so sorry you can see all of that. So, Naples Yellow, Yellow Ochre. Burnt Sienna, Quinn Gold, and Quinn Gold Deep. So sorry about that. And then we have Venetian Red, this time by Core. I don't think I've used this uh, as much as um, the Jackson's one. Almost forgot about that, but that is a yeah Venetian Red, which, to be honest, I don't like. And that's why I got the Jackson's version, because, you know, it is cheaper than, say, Daniel Smith or Schmincke. Um, Transparent Brown Oxide is next. And it's very similar to, you know, these colors. So, and I prefer, I'm, I'm just more familiar with these. But, yeah, this is Transparent brown oxide and then we have green gold you would think that I would use this color a lot because you know it's the color that I love but um, I haven't 
And I think it's because, one, I love the Daniel Smith Serpentine, Serpentine, and I just go with that. And also, two, I don't necessarily want that pushy effect when I use greens, because I like to have greens kind of, I don't know, maybe I should just use them more. Sap Green by Core. That's Max. And then we have Indigo. Very dark indigo color. This is very, very effective. Like, it's gorgeous. I love colors like this. You know, you can dilute it. And, or you can use it with a lot of punch. Uh, we have Raw Umber Neutral. Not sure what makes it neutral. But raw umber it's kind of similar to that tiger's eye genuine color and you know it's very versatile and of course i have cobalt teal i would i was not going to include it in this palette but then i thought well you love this color <laughs> and you have other teals in the palette already so you know it doesn't really matter that much that is super bright <laughs> And last, we have Van Gogh Buff Titanium. And it is, it's hard to see, but it's a creamy Buff Titanium color. <laughs> so th this is all from me today. I hope you found this helpful. And, you know, I a year or two ago, I was all about bright candy, you know, colors. And since I've been painting more landscape, I realized the importance of neutral colors and uh, now I have a completely, well, in my opinion, neutral palette. And some of these colors might be still very bright um, to the eyes, but you know, they work very well together and I love it. So that's it from, all, from me and I hope to see you next time. Bye.